Welcome back to Explore. I'm Ted Danson. Chelsea Clinton moved into the White House at the age of 12 and grew up in the national spotlight. She is now a wife and a mother of two, uh, has four academic degrees, including a doctorate from Oxford, and she is the vice chair of the Clinton Foundation, which is improving the lives of millions of people all over the world. Please welcome my friend, Chelsea Clinton. Thank you, Ted. I'm very excited to be here with you on Explorer. Yeah, me too. This is neat. Usually, we're in a room full of your parents and my wife, Mary Steenburgen, who's known you since, uh, since before. <laughs> yes. Forever, literally. Yeah. So I'm very excited just to have you and me talking for a second. Um, when people ask me about the Clinton Foundation, my eyes cross because you guys are in 70 countries, you're impacting millions of people, and you're doing so much. Take us through what the Clinton Foundation does. The foundation started to try to help more people around the globe access life-saving medicine to turn uh, their HIV uh, from a death sentence into a chronic disease. And right. so I really am uh, incredibly proud of the work that the Clinton Health Access Initiative uh, has done to help now more than 10 million people access life-saving medicine, including uh, hundreds of thousands of kids across the world who you know, may not be able to have those drugs right. kind of without the foundation's work. So from that um, came the work that we do uh, to help combat childhood obesity here in the United States, to empower women and girls around the world uh, to try to fight the elephant poaching crisis. And we do lots of different work, but it all started from kind of this early idea of kind of what can we do to change the way we think about a problem and hopefully to then find a solution. Now, I think we have a photo of a young man named Basil. You wouldn't know this looking at him when he looks so healthy, but he was born HIV positive. His parents uh, both had died by the time he was only a, a month old. He had uh, stage four HIV, and uh, he also uh, had tuberculosis. And no one thought he would survive, much less become a, a healthy, thriving little boy or now a teenager. And so Basil is one of the hundreds of thousands of kids around the world who get pediatric antiretrovirals through uh, drug contracts that the foundation helped negotiate. Uh, and there are more than 10 million adults who also get their life-saving medicine through work that the foundation helped do um, in, in Cambodia and really around the world. And so whenever I get discouraged, I, I, like, I, think, about, I think about Basil yeah. and I think about all of um, the kids and the adults uh, whose lives have been uh, literally saved yeah. um, kind of through the work that we do. And so we just have to keep doing it to hopefully have the privilege of knowing there are even more Basils out there who will benefit from our work. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I know that your mother has worked very hard to change what's happening to the elephants in Africa, and I know that's a big concern of yours. Will you talk to me about that? Over the last uh, few years, my mom and I have worked uh, intensely on this issue uh, to support really the work of uh, the big conservation groups, but also groups you may not have heard of that are working in places like Tarangiri, the, the picture behind you, uh, to save uh, the African savanna and African forest elephants, you know, because we are facing a crisis. We lose 96 elephants a day. Uh, oh to poaching. And if that rate continues, my children, your grandchildren will grow up in a world without elephants. And we know we need to continue to do more to support um, the rangers who are on the front lines. We've had more than a thousand rangers yeah. killed by poachers in recent years. Um, wow. And this is not only a, a moral issue and a conservation issue, it's also a security issue. That's interesting. Don't buy, Don't buy any kind of ivory. Don't buy ivory. Write to your congressman, yeah. your senator, because if you care about terrorism around the world, as we say we do, this is one of a connection to that. There's a reason why um, Interpol, uh, the FBI, um, various uh, parts of our military, including the Marines, have all been engaged in uh, anti-poaching efforts. I mean, it is because they understand, you know, even better than I do, right. um, how connected elephant poaching is. To, to terrorism uh, and to real threats against people who live in, in Europe and the United States, as well as uh, clearly the people that are living under those, 
those threats and that terror every day in East and West Africa. We know uh, Al-Qaeda in North Africa, the Jajana weed, um, multiple terrorist groups um, use ivory to help lubricate the supply chains of trafficking and people and guns uh, and to fund their terror, um, which is horrifying for the populations they terrorize, um, but also a real threat to us here in the United States, given the increasing consolidation of terror networks around the world. I think I'm used to thinking of Clinton Foundation, Africa, and all around the world. And where do, where do we see you, the Clinton Foundation, in this country? So our largest program uh, is through a partnership with the American Heart Association called the Alliance for Healthier Generation. Um, and the Alliance really sprung out of my father's heart scare, which you may remember. Yes. And when he was on the precipice of having what his doctor said would be a catastrophic heart attack. But out of that, uh, he reached out to the American Heart Association to say, you know, what can I do on heart health? And I think he thought they were going to say, like, please be the poster child for why men need to go to the doctor. Because often um, when men have chest pains, they don't go to the doctor. And right. sometimes that can have... You know, and, and tragic consequences. And the symptoms look different. And the symptoms women. look different for yeah. men and women. Um, and they said, yes, like, please do that. But what we really need help with is childhood obesity. So in 2005, um, the Alliance for Healthier Generation started working. And now um, we're in more than 35,000 schools, uh, working with more than 20 million kids' lives, trying to help the schools uh, kids are going to be healthier environments, have healthier lunches, right. have physical education, kind of get back into the classroom and into kids' daily activities. That's great. Thank you so much.